When a person gets married, one of the things that he or she looks forward to after the honeymoon, inshallah, is to have children. And one of the biggest tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the following. And before I say it, let me tell you, when you understand that Allah has chosen for you a specific package of tests that is uniquely yours, not anyone else's. He knows that he issues sabr and patience according to the package that he's given you to you. You can never be burdened with something beyond what you can cope with because Allah has promised that he will give out to you the amount of sabr and patience that you actually need for your package that he already knows about. So don't say I can't cope. Yes, it gets to a level where perhaps you might want to do something about it. You know, people think that when we speak about marriage, you need to stay in an oppressive marriage because Allah says he won't burden you with something that you cannot cope with. That doesn't mean you need to remain in an oppressive marriage. All it means is when it gets to beyond a certain point, you can choose another way out that Allah has allowed you to. That's what it means. You can. So let's not misinterpret what is being said. But what I mean is when there are things you have no control over at all, there is no way Allah will open your door of sabr according to your problem, according to your issue. You lose a loved one, for example. Or the main issue that I wanted to start with is, and I said, one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest tests that Allah tests a couple with is when they do not have offspring. When they don't have offspring. That is your paradise. That is your Jannah. Allah says, hang on. I know exactly why I am not giving you offspring. You might not know. I know why I'm not giving you. And I'm telling you, this is the biggest test for you. And if you were to bear sabr, I want to let you know that I will be with you. My help is with you. And at the same time, for you is Jannah. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Indeed, Allah compensates those who have engaged in any form of sabr, unlimited reward, in an unlimited manner. Allah gives you so much. So my mothers and sisters, if from amongst you, there will definitely be people who don't have children and you desperately want those children. And yes, it is correct. Allah will keep you there for as long as he wills. And he may grant you a miracle according to what you perceive is a miracle. And if you don't get what you perceive is a miracle, you need to know that what he has done for you is always a miracle. You need to know this. When Allah doesn't give you what you want, you need to know he's always done whatever he wanted. That was the miracle for you. You may not understand it. I know of people who've had children after a long, long time and then they lost their children to a motor vehicle accident. And I remember being told, I wish I didn't have these children in the first place. Well, when you didn't have them, you continued to cry about it. Well, there is no harm. You are supposed to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he tests you with not giving you what you want. It's, think about what I've just said. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given you what you want, one of the reasons is he wants you to draw closer to him by calling out to him alone. That's what it is. If every one of us had whatever we wanted, I think a lot of us would not even be reaching out, calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think we would be dilly-dallying in our acts of worship. But when you have a problem, it's a medical issue, it's a social issue, it's a financial issue, whatever issue it may be. You start calling out to Allah, your heart becomes softened. It should become softened. And this is why I say, and I'm repeating, if you don't have children, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this, the many things that you do have and continue asking. I'm not saying sit back and say, look, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to do anything. I don't want to seek perhaps medical advice. I don't want to see if there's anything wrong. I don't want, and I'm just going to sit because I'm a mu'mina and I've been told that you just need to be happy with the decree of Allah. That is a warped understanding of taqdeer, of predestiny. Warped. Allah says, do whatever is in your capacity to 
to achieve what is beneficial for you according to you. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Make sure that you go the extra mile to do that which you believe is beneficial for you. Then, ista'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. Seek the help of Allah and don't be lazy. And then when something happens to you, the hadith says, وَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٍ لَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ بَابَ الشَّيْطَانِ When something finally does happen, this way or that way, don't ever go back to blame the term if, if, if I did this, had I done this, this would have happened. If I did this, that would have happened. Don't say that because the if opens the door of the devil. That's what it means. You did it and that's it. I tried my best. I continued making dua, but I'm happy upon what Allah has chosen for me. That's something that I need to understand. So those who don't have children, may Allah bless you with children. Those who don't have offspring, may Allah bless you with offspring. Then mashallah, we are blessed. Mashallah. And what happens? Five years later, eight years later, ten years later, I know of a case 18 years later, mashallah, when people almost lost hope and Allah says, hey, I'm going to give you something. And suddenly you're expecting and suddenly you have a child and suddenly it's a boy or it's a girl. And mashallah, we're so excited. Life changes and everything becomes so exciting. That's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it?